the C's of Christian living. We've been talking about them now for uh, about a month. And as we've been looking at them, we've covered several so far. Crisis, uh, culture. Last week we talked about conflict. And we said there's conflict outside the church. There's conflict inside the church because we're humans. And we, we know that We've been called to love our enemies, pray for those who persecute us, that we should overcome evil with good, and that our roots should go down deep in Christ so that when persecution comes, we have the ability to have a sustenance in the love of God through persecution. But also, if we meet uh, with conflict inside the church, that we we should reconcile. We should not cause division, but reconcile. We're just humans, and uh, the church is made up of humans, and that's what we're to do is bring our, our the, let the Spirit of God transform us into people of peace, especially within the church, because we want to uh, make sure that... Uh, um, they will know we are his disciples by our love for one another. Amen? All right. So this week we move on to the fourth C, and uh, uh, Pink, bless his heart, he read it in context because he said, my sermon is on content. Right? Not content. However... As we're going to see today, content and content have a lot to do with each other. All right? So um, I'm going to kind of set the stage for this sermon by reading us Matthew 6. Matthew 6, <clears throat> 25 through 27. Matthew 6, 25 through 27. Therefore, I tell you, this is Jesus speaking, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither snow, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life. <sighs> By being anxious. The, this idea that we should be content versus being anxious, being worried by a fretting. That's what we're going to look at, is how do we as Christians live a life of contentment? All right. Now, <clears throat> I broke this down into three parts. I, I know you're surprised. But we're going to look at being content with our physical situation. Then we're going to look at being content in our emotional situation. And then we're going to look at being content but not letting it be an enemy to progress. Okay? So first, let's look at Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Pink read us verse 11. I'm going to read a couple more verses after that. Uh, Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Scripture says, uh, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of, placing, of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. You know what the secret is? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
I think we, we always uh, take that verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but Paul is relating it specifically to being content. To being content. So in your bulletins, I am to be content. The physical matters in plenty and in want. In, in, in uh, uh, what does he say? Abundance and in need, in plenty and in hunger. I have this going for me. That I can be content in every circumstance because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <clears throat> now, this is, again, not unheard of. I mean, Paul isn't bringing this new revelation here. Jesus, again, on the sermon, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. Jay Weber always gave me a hard time about licking my fingers to turn my Bible pages. He says, your Bible is just not ever going to close. It's just going to be. Matthew 6, Matthew 6, verses 28 through 32. So um, we read 25 through 27 about Jesus saying, do not be anxious. But then he goes on and he says this. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentile seeker seek after all these, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Learn, learn to trust in God's provision and be content. I, I, I thought of the uh, little poem, um, or it, maybe it was a, just a, I don't know if it was a poem or a, a little saying, uh, praise God for the dirty laundry, because at least I have clothes to wash. Praise God for the dirty dishes, at least I have food to eat on them, right? That idea of being content with what God has provided us. Being content and, and not being, um, well, her dirty clothes are a lot nicer than my dirty clothes, right? That, that whole idea. Right? Not the comparison. I think we, we often aren't content because we compare. And, and one of the things that we're called to is just being content with what God has provided. Okay? Now, Hebrews 13, verse 5. Oh, I need to get my... Sometimes the secretary prints something different than my notes. So I just need to make sure, Hebrews 13, verse 5, says, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, this idea of, uh, we could have gone right back to the parable of the soils. Last week, we looked at making sure that we could withstand conflict from outside the church by having our roots down deep and not being in that rocky soil. Well, I could have taken you right back there this week because in the weedy soil, he compares it to those who have the worries of life and the pursuit of wealth choke out the word of God. It's like seed that has fallen in weedy soil. They allow... They allow the, the worries of the world and the, the pursuit of riches choke out the word of God. That, that's, that's why we need to learn to be content. Okay? Being content. Look at uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6. Timothy 6, verses 6 through 8. But godliness with contentment 
is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of the world. How many times have you heard that? But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. Now, <laughs> physical contentment. It takes practice to be content with what we have. It takes discipline. It takes strength through Christ. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I think sometimes being content often is determined by what our content is in our life. Does that make sense? <laughs> often the content of your life determines if you're content, right? I'm not saying that we should not uh, uh, try to um, improve ourselves. I'm not saying that. Um, but sometimes we let the pursuit choke out what's more important. And that is the spiritual things that God is trying to do with you. And we're going to talk about that kind of uh, next, the next two points, all right? But right now, I think sometimes um, the content of our lives, what we have, often determines our contentment, okay? And, and maybe, it maybe it shouldn't, right? I mean... Sometimes we worry so much about the content that um, being content is not what we are because we're worrying too much about the content. All right, so let's look at um, like emotional, being emotionally content. Philippians 4, uh, 6 through 7. We've read this and read this and reread this and preached it and preached it again. And just like Peter, I'm just going to remind you one more time. All right? Pete just said, I know you already know this. But it's good for me to remind you. So I'm going to one more time. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That idea of being able to put worry aside and be content. Sometimes this worry is more than just worrying about physical things. It becomes an exhausting exercise where we become emotionally drained. And what we really need is peace, not to just guard our hearts, because we do need peace to guard our hearts, to protect the, the innermost you, but also this thing that often works overtime. Hey, men, pal, I'm telling you, I cannot fathom having a pain so bad on a foot I don't have. I can't. Nobody nobody here can say, oh, poor Jamie, man, I really get that. We don't. Yeah, it's so real that in that time between wake and sleep, she'll tell me she sees her foot. It's physically, emotionally exhausting. All right? But we can help. Uh, well, see? Mm. What's next week? Community. Oh, 
Don't steal my thunder. <coughs> but God has called us and provided for us to be able to be content even in emotional um uh, in our emotional state, right? Not just our physical state, but our emotional state, which is often very closely tied. <clears throat> Look at First Peter. I think we we sing this song, right? First Peter five six through seven. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you. Cast all your Cares, anxieties on him because he cares for you. He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. He is our peace. He is our peace. That's, that's where we throw those on to him. We, we um, come to him because his burden is light, right? He wants to lighten our load. Not that, there, that he'll that we'll be loadless, right? But we don't have to bear it alone. Community. And then Romans 8, 18. Romans 8, 18. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us, trying to bring ourselves emotionally to that, that spot where we say, this is temporal. There is something greater waiting on the other side. And it doesn't even compare to what we're going through here. That God has got something far greater then this life, this life is temporary. We have, and that can bring us into emotional, being emotionally content. That's why in Philippians 4, 8, he finishes that thought about being anxious. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Be not anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication. And thanksgiving, make your requests known of God. And then in verse 8, he says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. That's that. It takes practice. It takes discipline. It takes the strength through Christ where I can do all things and concentrate on these rather than the worry that's presented to me. That's the easiest words I can say for a very difficult, a very difficult, thing to carry out. We can say it, but the, the, where that rubber meets the road, where it actually happens, is, is a very difficult situation. And again, I will say, often, the content of my thought life will determine if I'm content. It's that, that uh, eternal perspective versus the temporal. All right? Now, <clears throat> of course, when Jamie's going through the thick of it, that's what we need to come around and put our arm around her and say, uh, you know, this is only temporary. God's got something better for you in the future. And she's like, I just saw my foot. You know what, what she needs is 
Man, Jamie Joe, I love you. I wish I could make it better. I wish, I wish I could take your pain. And you know what she always says? No, I'm strong enough. I'm, you're not strong enough. That's the thing. We, we are, are called, or no, no, no. We are given the ability to be content, even emotionally, through hard, hard times. But not, well, not alone. That's why we're going to look at community. But then I want us to look back at Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus saying, I I think I heard somebody, maybe it was Pat, went on to verse 33 in Matthew 6 when we were talking about don't don't rely on, uh, um, don't worry about the food or what you wear, even the Gentiles, the pagans, search after these things, right? He, and, and Jesus is saying, for the Gentiles, the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But then what's he say in verse 33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Right? We sing that too. And this is where I want to make sure that we understand a a quote. And I was going to go back up to the school last night and try to find it. In, In my book of athletic quotes, I have this quote, and I was going to go try to find out who said it. So right now it's just unknown. Unknown to me. Somebody knows it. And the the quote I used to tell my boys is, contentment is a sure sign that all forward progress is about to come to an end. I'm fine, just the way I am. I'm okay. We can't let being content Stifle spiritual growth. We can be content with what we have. We can be content with our being content and going through the trial. But I pray we're never content with our Christian growth. Matthew says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. There's an um, idea of seeking, seeking, not um, just setting and waiting for the kingdom of God, but seeking first the kingdom of God. That idea that we should be striving towards it. Philippians 3, right before uh, Paul tells the Philippians um, not to be anxious about anything and that... that uh, um, He's, he's uh, also, uh, um, he's learned to be content in every situation. Look, look what he says in, in chapter 3. Where am I going? Where did I say that? Flipping through like I don't know where I'm going. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. And this is what Paul says. Paul, the apostle, Paul. Not that I have already obtained this, or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on. I don't sit in 
in contentment to the point where I die spiritually. We, we have to press on. Uh, uh, don't be satisfied with past victories and don't be brought down by past defeats. Press on for the prize. Move forward. Peter says in 2 Peter 1, For this very reason, make every effort, effort, make every effort, to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. Whew. There's a lifetime of work, of striving, of pressing forward, of not being content, but moving forward, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, hmm, interesting. So even if you have all these qualities, they need to be increasing. They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's what the weedy soil did. It choked out the seed and it did not bear fruit. Four, whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten what he was cleansed from his former sins. Nearsighted. I can't even read that tapestry back there. So nearsighted, I can't even remember what, what God saved me from. These are a continuing effort. So don't be content with your, I finally made it. I'm good. There's nothing for me to work on. I'm great. Because that type of being content is a sure sign that all forward progress is about to come to an end. And I know, and you all know, that there, if, you, if a person is not growing, like producing cells and regenerating, they die. We don't want to die a spiritual death. Which... That's what we preached, right? We spent the beginning of this year in Ephesians chapter 4 talking about you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And in, verse, in Ephesians chapter 4, we saw that Jesus Christ gave gifts to the church. And what were those gifts given for? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body, of Christ, when? Until we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There's growth there. There's moving forward. There's maturity. Don't take a lesson or a sermon on contentment and let that idea of being content bring you to a halt in your spiritual growth. Really, really, the if we did a number one and two in our sermon, we would be growing, right? And often, the content of your life determines if you're content. So, I'll end with this. Philippians 1, verse 6. So, Paul starts his letter to the Philippians with this. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you 
will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Don't think you're on your own in your spiritual growth, in your physical contentment, in your emotional contentment. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In fact, uh, 2 Timothy 1.12, uh, there's a little song about this. 2 Timothy 1.12. Anybody know it? Um, well, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard until the day what has been entrusted to me. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Huh. We know that he will bring it to completion. Being content in that fact that he who began a good work will bring it to completion. Amen? All right, so if you all will, open up your chorus books to Chorus 101. Chorus 101, Gentle Shepherd. sing that song, I think of uh, Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What do you mean you don't want him? No, no, no. I shall not need, right? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for helping us by, by uh, through Christ that we can do all things even being content, especially being content. Lord, being content in the life you've called us to, to the vocation, to the, the ministry that you've called us to. Lord, being content with the, the life you provided us. But Lord, help us to always be striving to grow in our Christian spiritual life. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for helping us, for giving us the strength we need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed. Yes.